All right, I'm gonna try something new. So as you all know, uh, I've been a bit off grid. <laughs> Things have been interesting to say the least. I'll just leave it at that. It would take days probably for me to tell the whole story. Anyways, um, I have a new job now, uh, still HVAC related. Um, my and my content is changing obviously because I have a different job so I'm trying to get used to that figuring out you know what I can film and what I can't um, on the one hand I loved doing the super complex VRF stuff but then again you know I'm not sure how many people could relate to that I know that um, a lot of people could and I still do have VRF equipment that I work on but not as much so I've been debating on, you know, is filming this or that even worth it, you know, and I don't know, but I'm going to try something new. I'm going to feel something that I consider boring, um, but I'm going to give some tips and tricks like I always do, and I think that um, some of the younger guys that follow the channel will appreciate some of those tips and tricks. I know that I did when I was young and just trying to learn stuff. And uh, the more people that you can learn from, the more experienced people that are knowledgeable and skilled and can teach you good stuff, the more of those people that you can learn from, the better. So I'll throw this out there and we'll just see what happens. Basically, there's a kitchen that's having a hard time cooling. Well, I found the return vent just flopped over, you know. <laughs> So I need to get that return vent back on this grill, but you can see the reason it was never attached to begin with is because, well, attaching it is difficult or takes more work, and I guess someone decided that'd be better to flop it on there. Uh, surprise, surprise, right? <laughs> if you hear back uh, noise in the background, that's the rain. Um, I apologize for that. Anyways, um, I'm gonna be cutting this, um, because I don't have sheet metal on me, I'm gonna make some sheet metal out of this stud. And that's gonna give us a chance to talk about snips. You know, you always want your your right and left hand. Um, if I'm even doing that right, it's hard to get right on camera, but basically, um, these right-handed, I wanna say the greens are left, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I know some of you will be screaming at the screen. I'm not, I'm not a sheet work person, right? But, um, you know, you do want, now, these are quick and everything, but the main problem is that when you're cutting something, here, here's a good example, like, the jaw itself has got to bend the metal up out of the way, right? So, you know, you've got this problem of this jaw right here has to lift that up, and that can be hard on random pieces like this. And that's where something like I, um, this this double cut shear co comes in handy. All right, I mean it comes in handy anyway because it's battery powered, but uh, it really comes in handy because um, you know you can just zip ride through stuff um, without having to bend bend your piece. It makes nice straight cuts. Um, this is actually fairly expensive. I bought it back when I was doing more installs. <laughs> You know, as luck would have it, shortly after that, I pretty much stopped doing installs. So, so anyways, um, buying this may not be worth it, but, but you can get like a corded, corded one if you're a tech like I am, and th those normally aren't too expensive. All right, let's get to work. <laughs> As you saw, it is a bit finicky, and if I was better with it, you know, it, it would probably go be, be going better, but sometimes it hangs up a little bit. Um, but once you get past that, it normally rolls pretty good. I cut this side kind of sloppy, you know, unfortunately, but, you know, I, I do need straight sides at least for where I'm, you know, going down to to mount on that right there. 
All right, the rain's getting loud now. Hopefully that's not affecting the audio too much, but um, these grills and kitchens get real nasty. Now this is like a new kitchen, so this one isn't too bad, but um, I've found that um, New Bright works really great, but a lot of times this dust on here is like greasy. All right, so where was I? Um, <clears throat> had a phone call, so I had to cut it short there. Um, WD-40 is actually a great solvent for anything oil-based, okay? And it'll also leave kind of a coating on here, which will help the grease not stick so bad. So I'm just going to go ahead and clean this one. I don't know why no supply house in my area carries these screws. Uh, HVAC supply house. I had to get these in, at an electrical supply house, but these are these are really handy to have. Every sheet metal guy knows that. But that's um, nah, just gonna allow that ceiling tile to fit right on there. Not that it's that big of a deal, but it's just not gonna tear out around the ceiling tile when I go to press it back down. All right, here's the finished product. So nothing fancy. Um, I didn't have any mastic, so just use some silicone. I don't, I don't have time to run out and get it. But um, here, here's a little tip for you. Now, when you spray this on a surface, it'll keep the caulk from sticking to that. So you want to make sure your caulk is nice and snug first, because you don't want this getting underneath the caulk. But if you just hit it like that. You know, it does the same thing that soap water does, and it just allows you to uh, do a really nice little bead. So I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, get all of this bolded and make sure there are no air leaks. All right, there she is all done, so I'm going to get her back up in the ceiling. All right, I'm done with the job now, so it's cleanup time. I want to show one last tip, and that is on silicone. Now, for HVAC, you don't want to go like go to Lowe's and buy silicone. You, you want HVAC silicone. Yeah, it even says it, you know. But basically, this is a, a, a much more resilient silicone as far as drying out once it's the tube's been opened. So these are much easier to save. So I highly recommend them. I only use that much. So I want to make sure this doesn't just end up in the landfill, right? I mean, total waste. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a thin piece of plastic. Just going to take this off, put the plastic on there, and screw that back down on top with the plastic. Okay. A little tough. I got threaded here. Okay. There we go. So, these do come with caps. All right, but I'm not going to put this back on there. For one thing, you know, where I cut it, even as high up as I cut it to get that size of a bead, I'm past the point where the cap sticks. Um, but the thing is, the further away you are from the tube, the faster it dries out. So I don't want to try to protect this. I want to try to protect all of what's in this tube. This right here, I actually want that to dry um, because I will unscrew that, stick needle nose in there and pull out this silicone plug that's that's dried and it won't stick or leave any anything inside this tube. It'll be perfectly clean and then I'll reuse it. One more little thing here is um, I do like to reuse gloves, okay? 
Um, cause you know, it, there's just no reason to throw these out every time. And what you do is, you know, you slip it off and then you can come back. And as long as you, you know, you don't have anything toxic on there or something, I just, I just put my mouth on it like this. <laughs> Whoops, blew that one out. <laughs> This is, this is one that I had saved on camera. I was trying to do it with a little too much force. Okay, so that, that's right side out, but they normally don't blow out like that. Just full of hot air today, I guess. 